Yeah. First of all, guys, I know you've got very, very busy schedules. I'm really excited to have you here. So I wanted to say a big, big thank you. Be a king. Is this um, a, a slogan that really resonates with you? And Baz, I'll start off with you. I mean, you look at your wonderful career. Um, we'll look at what transpired in the Premier League, Blackburn Rovers, Portsmouth, eight years, 178 caps. Tell us about this feeling of playing your trade in the Premier League. Yeah, good day to, to everyone. Thank you, um, Carol. No, it means a lot, actually, uh, to be called a king. You know, um, I didn't know that I was a king till obviously we met Budweiser or we got a call from Budweiser and we thought that um, you know being acknowledged in this manner it means a lot um, yes one has been fortunate to play trade in, um, in EPL uh, for me that actually um, it makes me to be the king you know um, we all know that um, EPL it's the best um, league we can argue that, but for me, it's, it, it actually I think it is. You know, you look you look, you look at the marketing um, from EPL, um, the viewing from EPL, and being part and parcel of that um, you know that setup. It meant a lot. It's been a a dream uh, come true. Um, yes, we have travelled. We played in Netherlands. We played in Belgium. Um, played in, um, in in the UK, but I think for me EPL actually it has been the best league, and probably the best moment for me was um, when I saw that contract from uh, from Bradman Rovers uh, in pounds. Wow! Yeah. From from the dusty streets of uh, of the Val uh, to the UK, um, I felt amazing. You know, it absolutely meant a lot to me when you when you were holding that contract did you have it in your mind that this was a defining moment and it was up to you now to make the best of this opportunity no for sure for sure um hence i said from dusty streets yeah. being brought up by as we know it's a women's month um <laughs> yeah i have been you know brought up by one parent which is my mom um i never really um thought that one day I'll apply trade in the in the UK. So, yeah, it actually it was the best moment ever. I mean, you have mentioned the games that I have played with the national team, but um, being the captain and of course being the captain, 2010 World Cup, the first World Cup in in Africa. Africa yeah. yeah. Um, but that for me, she had that contract with uh, Blackburn, it means it meant a lot. It absolutely did. Nassif, he says uh, the Premier League is, is the best league in the world. But of course, we're talking about Premier League, we're talking about La Liga as well. These are undoubtedly the standout leagues, right? Talk to us about the magic of La Liga. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'll obviously disagree with... Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe it's because I've never played in the yeah. EPL, so obviously I have a different idea about it. But uh, if I look at it like um, the experience that I had in the, in the La Liga, Oh yeah, we know that you played Champions League. So okay. No, not in not in La Liga. In Greece, I played Champions League. But yeah. in La Liga, I you every week, week in and week out, you're up against the world's best players, and um, just the style of football. I think England has a more physical aspect to it, and then Spanish has a more technical <laughs> aspect. What are you trying to say? No, I'm what not saying. I'm just saying like you want to start on here. I want no, no, I'm not saying you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving my view. Like, and I think it's a bit more. Uh, tactical in, 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 in La Liga and uh, my experience like they having uh, having the opportunity to play against those kind of players yeah. Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, <laughs> Sevilla, uh, Atletico Madrid it's been a, a, an amazing experience for me I mean growing up as a kid like also I mean I think we share a lot of us share the same backgrounds coming out of Mitchell's playing uh, for me in Cape Town um, always having a dream to become a pro footballer, but you know, when I reached uh, at Santos playing P uh, PSL at the age of 16, I thought that you know, I'm sure that I can do something more with my with my with my career. And I think if I think back, I had a an under 20 national team. I had uh, Augusto Palacios as a coach. He was involved with Pirates. He wanted to bring me there, yeah. and. Um, I think I spoke to Mr. Ivan Koza and uh, I said to him with all this respect, the, all, all respect, respect yeah. um, 
my first step would be trying to get to Europe. And my first opportunity that I got to go, uh, I actually made it. And then from there, it just kicked off. Then got to play Champions League with Panathinaikos in, in Greece. And then moving on to Spain, playing La Liga after that. Yeah, uh, very standout, Kahisha. I mean, very few players make that direct move from South Africa to the Premier League. For you, had, had it always been a dream as well to play in the Premier League? Yeah, obviously. Um, it's every player's dream to play in the EPL or yeah. in, in La Liga, you know. Uh, it was a tough decision, to be honest, and I got to thank Aaron uh, today. I never got to thank him before. He is one of the people that motivated my move to to Fulham, you know, straight from Golden Arrows to yeah. Fulham. So I had to sit with him on the call for some time, you know, asking him for advices, uh, contract-wise. And then, yeah, it happened. Uh, what kind of advice did he give you? Look, it was money issues. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was going to get like 200,000 yeah. pounds a week, you know, but uh, <laughs> it wasn't that much, yeah. you know, but yeah. Um, he obviously gave me the best advice. He was like, you know, uh, go out there, yeah. have some, some patience, get some game time, and hopefully they will improve your contract. And uh, it worked out. Uh, so, yeah, I enjoyed my stay over there, and I do miss it a lot. But, uh, yeah, it was great. Yep. Sorry, Kara, can I join you? Uh, I was just thinking, like, if you look at the generation that's sitting here, yeah. compared to the generation from now, I don't see that drive that one to challenge themselves and experience and try to push themselves to the limit. I mean, because we all, I think, if you look at it, we had an opportunity to go to Europe where that wasn't the biggest club in, in Europe, but it was a starting point. Yeah. And from there, you put yourself in the, in the, in the window uh, for the rest of the, of the Europe to, to, to have a look at you and maybe get an opportunity. And that's, I think, what we all did uh, in, that, in that situation. But I think from today, it's, I think it's a bit different. I think it's more, they're more comfortable here playing in South Africa. They want to go out of their comfort zone. So that's one I thing that like you it. want to say to, to, to the current footballers. Is, yeah. yeah, it's like the challenge yourself. Yeah. Try and, and, and see how far you can actually go. Don't be comfortable, Try, get out of your comfort zone. Uh, live in a different company, a different country, different culture. Experience different things uh, in the world. We, we all have that opportunity. Yeah. Um, Aaron, can you tell us uh, maybe some of um, your favorite stadiums to play at, some of the best stadiums that you've played in? Well, for me, I think um, uh, the Anfield. Anfield, for me, actually, it's, um, yeah, it's one of the best, and obviously the atmosphere. Um, again, one has been fortunate to play at Wem Wembley as well, but, um, which I think it's also one of the best stadiums. But um, Anfield with the you know the atmosphere that um you know the fans are amazing you know um at um at anfield yeah so i think anfield was um was the best stadium ever for me to wow. to actually play but i think I, sh I, should, I have to say something to thomas thomas be aware that uh, here you have a golden generation yeah. um and yeah Kakiso was telling me earlier on that when are we signing contracts? <laughs> <laughs> so um, just putting it out there would be nice to sit and, and talk about the contract. Yeah, I'll have a word with him, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. Yeah, let's see if you, you're still fit. Um, um, a football, obviously, it's, it's, more, it's more than just about what, what happens on the field of play. And that's why we're also excited about this partnering with, with Budweiser, because it also talks about the lifestyle of the footballer. So tell us a little bit about your lifestyle off the pitch. Um, let's go to you, Kahisha. You know, it's about the tattoos. It's about, as Tugelo was saying, the cars. Um, tell us about your lifestyle, the type of music that you enjoy as well off the pitch? Uh, you know, I'm a married man now with two kids. Yeah. Uh, well done, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but all that had to change, you know. Uh, we obviously go through that phase when you, you're still playing professional, you wanna look fancy, you wanna, you know, do all this kind of, of, of stuff. But um, yeah, I'm into fashion also. I love my clothes, um, yeah. For you, Nassif cars? Yeah, I used to be uh, not so much on the fashion side, yeah. more of the cars. Uh, <laughs> but you know, we all go through that phase. Like, uh, 
having those uh, expensive quality things like and things like that. And like KJ said, as you go on further in your in your life in your career, you get married and uh, you know things start changing a bit like now because now there's kids involved. I'm sure not a lot of people know that because I'm actually uh, I have a set of triplets. They're turning three this month coming now, the end of the month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of people say it's a blessing, but uh, I don't know, like, because they, it's three of everything. You can't buy one toy, you need to buy three exactly the same. <laughs> and then they still end up fighting over it. So, you know, those kind of things, like, and then, you know, you need to prepare, like, yourself, like, now for the kids' futures and things like that, because education is so expensive, like, nowadays. So then you have to start getting rid of the, your play toys and things like that as an adult and then looking forward to the future for your, for your family and your kids. Tepo, if you were, um, and if, let's say you're an SA fan and this campaign, this Be A King campaign was launched, let's say 15 years ago, um, which Premier League or La Liga King would you have liked to see playing live? 15 years ago. Mm. For, for you, who stood out? Who stood out for you back in the day? Back in the days, mm. I'd go for Beckham. Okay. Yes. For you, Tugelo? Man United. Anyone for Man United? Okay. Nasif? Uh, La Liga. La Liga. Oh. Probably still think, relevant today. No, yeah. still, like, I think if I, if, I, if I have to say, like, I think Ronaldinho, and I had the opportunity playing with him, uh, against him in Champions League uh, with Pan Nikos, and uh, also with his career that he had in, in, in uh, all over, uh, he played with, uh, with La Liga and also afterwards in Serie A. And uh, I think definitely him. Aaron? Why? That's a, that's a difficult one, eh? Um, but I think Ray King uh, and Vieira for me, they they stood out, and um, obviously they, um, as we know that they were quite you know fighting a lot in the playing field. But I think for me actually they showed that um, you know football it's tough, uh, but then it's important that um, you you start in if you um, if you get that chance and obviously score goals as well. So yeah, I think them two for me actually they. Yeah, they made a difference in, in football. Mm. And Kahisho, finally from you as well, why was it an easy thing for you to be to agree to be one of the kings celebrated and be a part of this campaign? Why is it important to have a partnership like this where it's not just about showcasing the best of what happens on the field, but it's about celebrating our kings in the best leagues in the world and also talking about the lifestyle element off the, f off the pitch. Why do you think it's important? Uh, I mean, like uh, uh, Thomas has, has said, you know, they've, I actually didn't know that they've been involved uh, in football for so many years. You know, I only found, found out like, you know, maybe two, three years ago. And, you know, they've, they've, they've done well until this far, you know. And uh, for them to be partnering with two best leagues in the world is amazing, you know. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys are going to do great uh, for, for, for both leagues. And, uh, yeah, thanks. And you agree that it's undoubtedly the two best leagues in the world? Yeah, but yeah. obviously it's the, the <laughs> Premier League first and then the <laughs> League <laughs> We're not going to have this conversation again, I see. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your presence here, your, your words of encouragement as well. And may you continue uh, to be a king, as you will, till time immemorial. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.